When Sister Mickey came in a little while ago, she noticed that our graphic up here at the front was happy to be here. And our scripture today, Jesus repeats several different times, happy, happy. And keep in mind who he is speaking to. He's saying to specific people, you. He's talking to people who have challenges. Challenges in their everyday life. Challenges in a difficult time. Perhaps a time that we can relate to. And so we turn to Luke chapter 6. Verses 17 through 26, it says, Jesus came down from the mountain with them and stood on a large area of level ground. A great company of his disciples and a huge crowd of people from all around Judea and Jerusalem and the area around Tyre and Sidon joined him there. They came to hear him and to be healed from their diseases. And those bothered by unclean spirits were healed. The whole crowd wanted to touch him because power was going out from him, and he was healing everyone. Jesus raised his eyes to his disciples and said, Happy are you who are poor, because God's kingdom is yours. Happy are you who hunger now, because you will be satisfied. Happy are you who weep now, because you will laugh. Happy are you when people hate you, reject you, insult you, and condemn your name as evil because of the human one. Rejoice when that happens. Leap for joy because you have a great reward in heaven. Their ancestors did the same things to the prophets. But how terrible for you who are rich because you have already received your comfort. How terrible for you who have plenty now because you will be hungry. How terrible for you who laugh now because you will mourn and weep. How terrible for you when all speak well of you. Their ancestors did the same things to the false prophets. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And I think as we listen to that, we will hear familiar strains from a passage of scripture more commonly known as the Beatitudes. A part of the Sermon on the Mount? Yes, the Sermon on the Mount. And yet this passage says Jesus came down from the mountain with them and stood on a large area of level ground. Some translations say on a plain. Now what this makes me think of, uh, among the several professional speakers that I know, most of them have a basic message that they speak to their audiences. It's going to vary by speaker, of course. Uh, for instance, a professional speaker of my acquaintance named Craig Valentine has five basic keynote speeches that he adapts for every audience. And he's not simply delivering a canned speech. But then on the other hand, as professionals, you can't just give a brand new speech to every audience. So Craig says about 60 to 80 percent of every speech is the same material adapted for that audience. And we can imagine that Jesus had a consistent message throughout his ministry. I have actually heard people who said, there's a contradiction in Scripture. Matthew says it was on a mountain. Luke says it was on a plain. What makes us think it's the same setting? I have been here with you all for, I have such a bad sense of time, but I think it's uh, three years, over three years, something like that. As far as I know, we haven't repeated a sermon, and yet there are some themes that will run throughout the sermons that I preach, and most preachers are like that. There are some things that we focus a little bit more on. And so when Jesus is saying to these people, he doesn't say happy are the poor in spirit. He says, happy are you who are poor. Same basic idea. A little different focus. This is sometimes referred to as the Sermon on the Plains. It's also sometimes referred to as the Sermon of Blessings and Woes. Because we have woes pronounced here also. So without getting too technical about this, what is 
What is the basic message here? Jesus is not saying to these folks, the poor are better than the rich, or even better off than the rich. Rather, that riches can get in the way of recognizing our true happiness. Does it strike you as strange that Jesus would say in the midst of all of this challenge, he doesn't say you will be happy. He's using the present ongoing tense here. Happy are you who weep now because you will laugh. And yes, it's looking to the future, but it's also looking at the right now. It does remind me of a, a sermon that I have preached earlier. Honestly, I cannot remember if we have done it here. This is one that I've spoken about with various groups over the years. It's called, I Choose Joy as My Response. We're not talking about happiness the way that uh, I ate a chocolate cheesecake yesterday, just a little bit. Label on the front said, Death by Chocolate. And oh, that thing was good. No doubt about it. I enjoyed it. But it's not that kind of happiness that Jesus is talking about here. He's talking as, as Paul when he talks about love. And of course, tomorrow is Valentine's Day, a time when the world thinks about love, but the Bible looks at love differently as we looked at earlier this month, as we looked at 1 Corinthians. When Paul talks about love, he's talking about a choice. When Jesus is talking about happiness, he is talking about a choice. I choose joy as my response. Leap for joy because you have a great reward in heaven. The original word underlying the word happy here, some translations say blessed. It is a little different than any word that we have in the English language. It carries with it this idea that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can transcend our circumstances. We can choose happiness even in the middle of challenge. Part of this may even be the insight that comes from an old dead Greek guy named Epictetus, who said it's not what happens to you, but what you think about what happens to you that determines your experience. We have a choice in the way we look at things. I may not have much money, but I'm a child of God. I may be hungry, and yet I can still be satisfied. I may weep now, but there is also joy in the weeping. I, I, uh, one of the things I guess I should have mentioned in prayer is a joy. I've told you all about the speech contest that I've been involved in. I, we had another contest yesterday. And I would rejoice that uh, I came in first in that contest yesterday. But in that speech, I talked about the experience that I had, the things that I learned when my son died four years ago. And so in the middle of feeling the joy of connecting with that audience, I felt afresh the loss. I think it is part of human experience that we truly can have those mixed feelings, that that is the nature of life. So when Jesus says, how terrible for you who are rich, it's not just that he's saying, this is what's going to happen to you. He's, he's talking about an attitude, a way of being. He's talking about recognizing where our riches are. Those who are rich in worldly terms can miss the richness that we have in the kingdom of God. Those who have plenty now can miss out on the hunger that we have for God. 
to recognize where our lack is. Those who laugh now may fall into the trap of ignoring the difficulties that are truly a part of life. So when Jesus speaks both happy and woe to these crowds, it is prophetic. Prophetic not in the sense of here's what's going to happen, but prophetic in the sense of opening up a message from God about the realities that we all face. What a wonderful reminder here in this sermon delivered on a plane. And by the way, worth mentioning to the Hebrews, we, we talked a little earlier, Pat in his prayer talked about the mountaintop experience and the valley. Uh, to the Jews, the idea of the plain was about the same as the idea of the valley. Life has its ups and downs. We can choose joy knowing that God is with us both on the mountaintop and in the valley. Would you bow with me? Father, this life it is a school that you put us through, a crucible. It is where we learn our relationship with you. It is where we learn our shortcomings. It is where we learn our need for Jesus to connect us. We're grateful, Father, for the opportunity to learn. We're grateful that you have made it possible for us to be connected with you through the blessing of Jesus Christ. We're grateful that through your inspiration, through the Holy Spirit, that you have preserved these words of Jesus for us. May we use these, Father, not to judge others, or even to judge ourselves, but to open up our eyes, to deepen our relationship with you. We ask these things in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen.